I got a can of it. Did you did you just get one? Yep. Ed Gomez okay, called right. out. Yeah. If you only got one, I don't I don't blame you one bit. No, I, I think this is the this is in the collab with them with the hop hash. I swear it was one with uh That's got hop hash in it though. No, I, that this does. I know you can read. I don't Nate, mean it like that. Nate, but you need you need to Google hop hash immediately. I mean, this smells super fucking dank. I will Google. Here, it's, it's got hop hash in it, Chris. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, touche. <laughs> So the Hoppy Craftsman, I am Chris. With me this week is Jeff, Nate. I'm not banned from the podcast. We let none Ed. of us spoke until Chris pointed to us. We let Ed come back in the podcast. Everybody <laughs> can't see us right now. I pointed people and made them talk. I will allow it. <laughs> you speak. No, not you. You. Ed's back, and it's, we're all really happy about that. We're, we're thrilled <laughs> to have him. and it's fun. It's fun to have Ed around. He's a joy to be around, and he's never negative or anything. So thanks for being here, Ed. I think we need one of those speaking sticks where we can like air our feelings out, and we pass the stick. You, you have one right there in front of you. It's so a microphone. We each got our own speaking stick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you just called it. Yes, that's exactly we what you called it. We all have our own speaking stick, and I'm using mine right now. But Yours is floating. Yeah, it just keeps moving. So, thanks for coming back, Ed. Uh, thanks for kind of inviting me. I did. I was the only one. It's true. He said, "I will text Ed." Yep. So we let him after, 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 on, after on. Jeff got sassy about it. I, I made sure to get a hold of you. It's only because I, I had beer for you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, what did work out well? I, well. I have I have the proof that it was my idea to make sure to include you, Ed. So, thank you, you Jeff. You, I you, appreciate you can it. listen to what Nate says, and, and you can listen to the truth. <laughs> Well, has to be the voice this is a craft beer podcast about beer or our small petty issues. Which <laughs> are, I don't know which. <laughs> One of the two. We drink because of our small petty issues. Exactly. Ed, what have you been up to? What have you been doing with craft beer lately? You're uh, you're still doing the uh, blog? Uh, no, because my computer broke. Wow, that's a real piss poor uh, excuse. And too, I have too probably... Bad. <laughs> too bad you don't know a bunch of computer guys. Yeah. Well, it nuked itself. It wasn't coming back. Plus, I have probably... 10 computers worth of beer in my refrigerator plus probably a small vehicle so funds weren't exactly available for new, no new blogs no not recently but okay. i got a new computer so i can start writing so, again where have you been drinking recently everywhere Ed, i was gonna say that you can go to the library there's computers at the library i'm not going there library. where the homeless man Let liberty off. liberty um have i seen you guys since i went to the grand canyon i don't know nope no i don't believe so i survived the grand well, canyon good i have where have yeah, you been, Chris where, has. Where have you lot. been beer related while you were on uh, that trip? I went to Dark Sky, Ooh. and I got sweet ass uh, 0.3 repeating as a surprise. Did you guys see that picture? Nice. Mm-hmm. So we just mm-hmm. handed me a bottle of 0.3 repeating and the other one. I can't remember what it was. The, Point, uh, 0.6 repeating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> uh, uh, pi R squared. Ah, that's the uh, other one. Um, where else have I been drinking? Went to Polvo Vita on a whim to get mm. beer. Thank you very much, by the way. Yeah, I wasn't going to go because it was, they first announced the single release. Right. And then I was getting onto the 10 and I was texting my wife and I was like, I don't think I'm going to go. And then I looked at Instagram and it's like, oh, we're dropping three today. So I was like, I'm going to Tucson. I'm in. I'm back in at this point. Yeah. Not a bad trip. But it's a terrible drive. No, it's boring. Not. Yeah, it's boring. A little dusty. Terribly boring. Yeah. Lots of times you drive for that far and don't play a radio. <laughs> that gets real boring. <laughs> we will sit in silence and we will enjoy it. We will enjoy each other's company. I can't sit in silence. <sighs> Stuff. That's how we like. To, that's how the hoppy craftsmen like to like to road trip. Maybe that's why you guys are so angry with each other. <laughs> like brothers. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Uh, so we are drinking a beer right now. We probably should talk about the beer we're drinking. Yeah, it's a special one, thankfully. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, what are we drinking and where would you get it? How? We are drinking Cantillon Rosé de Gambrinus. Mm. That's how you pronounce that. Um, Sounds uh, good to me. Yeah, been... been Gambrino. Drinking beer a long time. Never had a Cantillon. You know, always been on my list, and uh, we did a road trip with 12 West and Grand Canyon out to uh, Captain Fatty's. If you've heard the Captain Fatty's episode, it was that trip, and uh, there's this little out-of-the-way, like, I don't want to call it ratty, but, I mean, it's it's not like a high-class 
liquor store. No, but, it, but it's, no, it's but it's not it's like full of high class beer though. <laughs> it's not like a a cashier behind bulletproof glass though either. And uh, Chris, what's that place called? Uh, El Cerrito. El Cerrito. So uh, yeah, every, everyone on the trip was all in to go to this place. We go in. They had uh, wood. It's they, insane. They had, they had of stuff. They had like magnums of uh, what was it? They had like all those magnums that we asked about, and they're like, "Oh, those aren't for sale." Right? No, don't remember. Um, I, yeah, was it Russian remember. River? No, it wasn't Russian River. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Oh, it, I it, was, it, I it may was, have been Russian. I think it was Russian yeah. River stuff. I think it was like he the supplication and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he was like, "Nope, not for sale. It's my personal collection." We're like, "Yeah, that, you, you that is store. You're like that is take it home, bitch." His that's personal like, collection that's not for sale that is amongst all the other beers out in the open that are for sale. A little odd. So they they had a decent canty on selection. Uh, I think they had four four different ones. So I got this one, Chris. You got the lambic. Yep, the straight lambic. Curic, the creek. Yeah, creek. Nice. Then yeah. they had the uh, what was the super spendy one? I, I can't Ooh, remember the name. That one I don't know the name of that. Well, how much was it? Uh, one hundred and twenty. I believe. glad I wasn't there. What about it? I, I it was in my hand. What about it? Jeff, it was, Jeff it, literally had to go. I'm gonna give this one bottle and leave right now. Like I was in the middle, like looking at stuff, and Jeff like bought one bottle and just left because <laughs> he was like, "No, nope. it's it dangerous in there." I remember it, that the the hundred twenty dollar bottle was in my hand. I took stock of all the money I spent on that trip, which was a lot. Oh yeah, it's tough. and it 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 just came down to it's getting time I, to do it again. I, I like my te- mm-hmm. I like my testicles attached, so I didn't want to go home and tell my wife. In addition to what you've seen. I also bought near nearly two hundred dollar bottles of beer, and when she expects me to bring in two hundred bottles of beer in like a wagon, and it would be two <laughs> bottles. <laughs> that there oh, you got two hundred dollars worth of beer. Cool. Let me. Did it come in a? Uh, did it? Oh, what the fuck am I trying to think of right now? Did it come in a barrel? Right. No, not by the barrel. It's these two bottles. Is the bottle made of crystal? <laughs> it's these two little guys, <laughs> like it's the a- little hotel size bottles. Right. <laughs> uh, I would say the. It's funny the uh, the. Picture on the front of the bottle is it's very, it's very racy. Naked. It is um, racy. It reminds me of like the little cartoons in the Playboy magazines. You know, definitely what I'm saying? feeling something over here. It's French. It's French. You <laughs> uncultured asshole. It, well, that French dude's Bel- getting it's, def- it's Belgish. That French dude's feeling up that lady. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> French dude. Why are they French? I'm pretty sure isn't this, isn't this beer made in Belgium? It's Belgique. It's definitely made in Belgium. Yeah, it's it's Belgian. <laughs> yeah, he looks French. I didn't say this. He Jeff looks French. French. So he Jeff says this French. I meant as Chris looks at a little cartoon man about I was, a quarter size. I was, in, I was implying he looks French. I was implying the artwork was French, not the beer. This is uh, this beer is uh, yes, Cantillon's a French word. Cantillon. Uh, <laughs> Cantillon's good. Cantillon the guys, is a French word. How do you think it tastes in your guys' coffee mugs? It looks it like out great? it looks like Kool Aid, man, and it is funky. It is funky definitely and red. funky. I don't know. It looks, I like the cool, it looks like the Kool Aid Man put this in here. It's nice and clear, but just deep red. We probably got more beer before the start of the show. It smells like feet. Yeah, we're going to take funk. a quick break. No, we'll just make somebody take a break and go get their own smells, beer for everybody. It smells like a farmhouse. It smells like stinky, feety funk, well, and well, I love it. Well, the Maharishi over here is doing a it, beer review, so. <laughs> it smells Perfect. like strawberry toast. Ed's a douche. In, in a barn. <laughs> Ed's rude. Cut that out. I didn't mean to call it a douche, but Ed's rude. I meant, no, I meant it. Never mind. I meant it. Again, I'm not editing this episode. You will be editing this episode. So feel free. Oh, well, that stays in. Because <laughs> when I edit episodes, there is minimal editing. So everybody keep it clean. Yeah. This is this beer. Um, I don't know. It's extremely good. It's a very good sour. It's 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 the bunny quotes real sour. So I don't know if I've ever thought to myself wow this is so much better than a kettle sour but it's certainly quite good it's, it's just really good different placement like yeah. you get it sits in your mouth more towards the front whereas those kettle sours kind of hit you back in the tonsils because they're usually more tart this is more mild i would say like it's not a punch in the face like most kettle sours are it kind of slowly waves in there <clears throat> yeah Th- what do you think it's this this or riley farmhouse is I'll pick. Oh. I'm sitting here thinking I'll pick a Rowley ten times out of ten over this. This is really good, but it's, yeah, it is. It's I really. Had, I haven't had anything better than the uh, Feliz Cumpleanos. Oh, that was good. In a, a long, I don't know if I've had a better beer than that, but I did. This definitely doesn't beat that. Yeah, the wow. Rowley was a lot smoother than this. And 
and it's, I don't know. I, I, obviously, it's always easier to have a deeper connection with something you feel a little more personal about. But regardless, like, like I said, that Feliz Campianos, the double cerise, uh, everything John does is special. So, yeah, I definitely, especially with it being in Arizona now, uh, which we're going to be talking about. Yeah, Canton's great, and I would still go to Belgium. I would still go to Belgium all day, go to Canton, enjoy all kinds of great beer in that in that area. But Oh, yeah, if, if, if I see this, I, I would buy it again. But um, only if it was competitively but, priced but, sitting next to a bottle of the Campanos. But yeah, yeah. If if I saw it and it was sitting next to a bottle of Rowley that was you know half the cost, and I I, was like, I I would much rather have two bottles of Rowley like over one jam bottle in of this. a bottle. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was good. Love you, John. And it wouldn't be a Hoppy <laughs> Craftsman podcast without fucking John Rowley's dick all over the microphone. <laughs> wouldn't be a Hoppy Craftsman podcast without Ed being rude. Not rude on all of them, just the ones I'm on. Exactly. Wait. Um, speaking of uh, speaking of John Rowley, he uh, as of May 23rd, he has an event at uh, Tortoise, I believe, and One, he yep. is back in uh, Arizona for full distribution, I believe. Right. Where there's a couple there's a couple things happening, right? Yeah, there's at least a couple fine. different events. I uh, was talking to them. I was actually talking to Rowley's Facebook, and they thought I was, was it, in. Was it talking back to you? It was. They were very on top of hey, their Rowley's job, Facebook, but they were like. <laughs> They were like thinking I was right there. They're like, "Come on down." I'm like, "I'll try, trust me. I'll be right there." They're like, "Don't. We don't open till 11:30. <laughs> don't worry. Like, I'm in Phoenix, so won't we'll see you till tonight." They have um, Wandering Tortoise on 5:23, yeah, yeah. Sip Coffee and Bar Garage on 5:25, and that might be just the only two. I might have got a little ahead of myself. I remember, some, the, the, yeah, I remember Sip, and then no, there's a there's another one somewhere. Yeah. Either way. Yes. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be exciting to see that beer on shelves in Arizona. I agree. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I Jeff, also, Jeff, I also agree. Takes. Jeff chimed right in on that one. Chris agrees. Love that stuff. Can we get a third? I, I concur. <laughs> Boom. Quorum. Four. <laughs> <laughs> that we're all in agreement here. I love it. This is great. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so do we. So it's going to be at like Wandering Tours and stuff. Have we seen anything about it being maybe at like Liquor Express or GCM or anything? I don't. Like I there? honestly don't know how extensive his distribution is going to be. We need to catch up with John to find out. But he's there. Obviously, it's obviously official and going to be continuing to happen on a regular basis. I just don't know to what extent we're going to see him. Hopefully, we'll see him in like Bevmo and shit. Well, Hopefully every everything everything that we've seen was uh, it's going to be at the Wandering Tortoise, obviously. Right. We know it's going to be a tap and bottle in Tucson. Right. Um, right. He had it in a total, was it total wine? Was it total well, wine or Bevmo? I think it's total wine. He, he, yeah, he posted a picture of like Rowley Farmhouse Ale bottles at a, at a total wine on the shelf, which is that, very cool. I'm going to have so many bottles by the end of the year just making sure I pick up as many as I can. I'm like, no, John, keep it coming. Arizona right. loves your stuff. Yeah, exactly. He just comes to my house and there's 100, 100 bottles in the back room. He's Perfect. Like, he's like, wait, that's, that's all the stock we sent to Arizona. We, we know. <laughs> Keep so, it coming. So kind of looking forward a little bit and maybe hoping uh, since he is distributed here now, air quotes, Rowan and Woody. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's kind of right up his alley, right? That's oh, yeah, a, he belongs there. That would be sweet. He could, have a, he could borrow a nice little home out over there. I thought he wanted to come but wasn't able to. Well, it was at Strong Beer Fest because he wasn't distributed here yet. So now that he is, yeah, I'm hoping maybe they uh, – Gets in on that because it's kind of his event. I mean, don't get me wrong, Strummer Fest is cool and stuff and stuff, and a lot of people there, but. Oh, I'll never go again. Rowan Woody is like <laughs> the. Uh... <laughs> I'm never going back to Strummer Fest. This last year is my last time ever. So he said two years ago, too. For a fact. And he came back. Maybe don't worry. Maybe different. you'll find your binky. It's different. It's, di- it's different. It's different now. Um, yeah, no, uh, hopefully, hopefully we see him all, kind of, all, all those uh, AZ festivals we don't. Yeah, and then I saw the Agent Scully, the new Agent Scully, or the extra, yeah, like the mid-season the one juice. with yeah, tons of ginger juice in there. The season one recap. That's the what it was. Season, season one, one re- recap. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> I need some of that. I need that in my life. Some of, John, if you listen to this, yeah, send John, me the bottle. Yeah, go ahead and crowler that up. <laughs> Perfect. Or you could just drive there. Yes. Uh, that's good. It's on the list. Some- We're going this summer. We're going July. July, August. We got to go. It's true. Right, but we'll wait. We'll pick until it's absolutely hot as possible and we're not bringing you. 
<laughs> pointed to Ed. <laughs> so we made, so we made <laughs> so Ed. So it's clear. Yeah. And he pointed to Ed. <laughs> and, and the rudeness comes around full circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. Uh, I think Ed has a car. Yeah, well, he can follow us. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. I can't keep. I can break check him for the next seven hours, though. I'll fly there. Oh yeah, that's what I said. Dude. I'll fly with you. Yeah, we'll fly. No, don't fly. Then you and Jeff could carpool yeah. there. Whatever, dude. We'll be fucking. We'll <laughs> just, fucking. We'll nail that. Say. That's that's not happening. I'll drive Bob on my fucking lonesome, dude. I just got the new car. All set. I like how you think like two sounds like a bad car drive, but like going across northern dude, Arizona and New Mexico is straight. Not. It's straight lines. Straight fucking boring. Yeah. No, is it New Mexico? Is it the same way? Straight long lines. Oh, yeah, dude. There's just like, nothing. It's like, oh, dude, I can't handle those kind of drives. Oh, there's like nothing, and then it's just no petrified hills? trees and stuff on the side of the road. Yeah, you, you leave rock Arizona. Trees? Yeah, there's rock tree. Tree rocks. I don't know. It's that crazy. sounds horrible. It's yeah. crazy. Whatever. John does it all the fucking time. I can do it once. You could. Well, you have to do it twice. Go ahead, Ed. Go, oh, Ed, do you have something to chime in there? <laughs> no, I'm good. Oh, he put his mouth to the mic and just nothing came out. Yeah, because I don't have any beer. Yeah, good. All right, let's take a break. Let's go grab some beer, and then we'll get some rid of some of this hostility and come back and do some more. Cool. Good. good. All right, guys, welcome back. We're back from break. We have a beer. We have a new beer. Jeff, tell us about it, buddy. Uh, this was given to me by a listener and one of our friends, Paul Flores. This is uh, Go For Broke from La Cumbre. Nice. And it is the third in the single, double, single hop, double IPA series. <laughs> it's a win. <laughs> single, double, single, single, single. You said Paul? <laughs> Paul Flores. Nice. Paulie, Thank Paulie, you, Paul. Paulie Walnuts on uh, Instagram. Thank you, Paulie Walnuts. Super good dude. Um this one is the centennial version. Ooh. And and I dig it. It's it's citrusy. Nice. Good. Very different uh, than a lot of other of the La Cumbra stuff. Like a lot of it's I've not had a lot of La Cumbra stuff, I have to be honest. The, well, I well, I had their collab with Modern Times. That's like Death by Postcards from Hell. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah, Postcards from Hell. I like that one. That was really good. Yeah. It's kind of a crapshoot with me with them. I mean, I've I've had uh, like when their beers are good, they're usually really good, but mm-hmm. They when they hit the mark, it's like, eh. I haven't tried any of their flagships yet. This one is good. I, I wish it was more fresh when we drank it, but we sat on this for a while trying to do, you know, this show. Well, and I mean, we it, had it, so many other things scheduled ahead of time that we even had chance to know and just do a normal show. So yep. beer is dangerous, do. man. It's tough. It's it tough. Def- it's definitely a citrus bomb. But uh, yeah, I I definitely would have loved to to try this when it was a little closer to inception. Right. Yes, it's impossible to keep up. Um, but I still dig this beer a lot. It's it's like a citrus bomb. Oh, Ed, you must have some old beer in that big fridge. I I have. What do I have? I have. That's a, a big fridge. I have. I think two releases ago, Refuge. A couple cans of that in there. That's not too bad. But I, think every, I had one of those. But every time I, I go to, I'm out. like, I'm not going to buy any more cans. I'm going to clean out my fridge and then Ren House drops ruins cans, it, and right. then Pueblo Vita drops three cans. So it's like. Yeah, well, I guess some stuff. It's nice that Pueblo older. Vita is in Tucson, actually. Yeah, it wreck everybody if yeah. it was. So what you're saying was, when I was at your house and your wife offered me more to take more of your beer, I should have took more. Of yeah, beer. thanks for that. My wife. Oh, was, if so, Sina offered me to take more, I would have definitely. She's taken like, it. I, I don't know what you what you're supposed to get, but just take whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, it's just two four packs, Sina. Thank you though. Yeah, yeah she's like, you didn't tell me what half. you were supposed to pick up, so I told him to take whatever. <laughs> yeah, and I was like. Now it's like these two four packs. Didn't stick around to help me move rock though. Uh, my son picked up a rock from your pile and then threw it, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, he helped a little bit, I guess." Mission accomplished. He's like, "Why do you got all these rocks?" I was like, "He does. I don't know. Don't worry that's about good it." Question, kid. Kid. Yeah, good question, kid. He's Mexican. That's what they do. Grab the beer. Let's go. I'm like, "Do you want to? You want to stick around and find out, or you want to go?" He's like, "You want to go get some ice cream?" Yeah. <laughs> let's do anything but that. And then apparently Stone and Cena are BFFs now. Oh, yeah. We yeah. saw each other at the grocery store. Uh, and he ran Occasionally over. Occasionally, Chris sends Stone to the grocery store to pick things up. He's, just, he, he's a brain independent three year old. He s- saw her in the wine aisles where he saw her and then ran Jeez. to her and said, I missed you, and then gave her a hug. <laughs> so, that'll, uh, that'll warm anybody's heart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, nice. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is a good beer. Bring it full circle. The Coomber's good stuff. And we actually have two more of this, too, right? Two more of the series? Oh, yeah. Yes, we have uh, this one, like I said, is number two. And I think we have, oh, this is third. And oh. then I think I think we have 
two and I think we have two, three, and four. You okay. should literally grab those right now and just, just keep them coming. Just work our way backwards. Yeah, just grab the one, grab the other two. You should do that right now. We just pop them open. We're we're gonna kill these in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Very, someone someone play some walk into the fridge music. It's very appropriate that Jeff did the uh, Star Wars approach to drinking these beers. Yeah, three, three, two, four. <laughs> Makes sense. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna I'm gonna capture that earlier and then I'm just gonna loop it over top of that. <laughs> Perfect. Were these all canned at the same time? Um, I believe so. Let me look. Hang on. All right, nice little uh, label uh, series, though. I like that. Yeah, the graphics are pretty nice. What, what's on the? It's pretty much like a little drawing of people on the, the one gag. I didn't really see it. Got a little people on there. Some people, some beards. They look like hipsters. No, cause Ed, this it's one is Best cool. Buy four twelve. So that one may be a little. Old. This, okay. extra, this extra guy looks like a little dink. sailor playing cards. He's a hipster for sure. Well, this I was guy. just curious. They're all canned on the same day, but not necessarily. No, this guy's from Portland. That's a guy from Portland. This one is. Oh, geez. yeah, yeah. He's the one who did. Did you think he did that one with the, the brown note one? No, I don't think it's the same artist. Style it, reminiscent? Similar. Got that big red nose like that guy does. Right. Anyway. This hmm. one, the uh, the single double series Citra Mosaic and Centennial Ooh. is still... Man. Allegedly fresh because this one is best before July. Crack them. Crack that one next. Crack it. Pretty crack. You guys drink that. I've we got. Gotta, we got to save the best for last. I'm name. actually drinking uh, a different beer altogether. I'm drinking uh, a Pueblo Vida latest release, um, Maximalism, a uh, India Pale Ale with Nelson El Dorado and Citra hops. Hit me. Hit me with some of that. Six point two percent. Here you go, Jeffrey. You know what the funny thing about those talking to Luke Vita Rand, cans? he loved it. Uh, uh, talk, the the PV cans. Yeah. What about them? Because when I was asking you guys what beers you wanted, yeah. nobody knew the names of any of the beers. Yeah, I, I told you just to get me all of them <laughs> in a different assort, but except for Entropy, I wanted a straight four pack of that. Yeah, I knew that too. I knew I needed a straight four pack of Entropy. Now, oh, is this wait. does does anyone know if this is Landon or is this? I'd imagine this would have had to Landon. have been there. Bef- this would have had to have been in the tanks before Landon took over. But I don't know a damn thing. They are. They turned beer well, up pretty I mean, quick there. Well, well they did that release that they weren't canning for a while because they had true. those issues. So who knows how long maybe, this was. Maybe right. their issues were a turnover. Yeah. Yep. They could yeah. have delayed it because of that. But, I mean, they sent out that press release email, whatever, basically saying, here's why oh, yeah. we weren't canning for a while. But didn't they blame the cans? Um, I believe I in that. They they mentioned two different canning companies, I believe, in that email, I thought. You know, if we were prepared, one of us would probably have that. Well, you know, and that the, that's, that's the crux of it, isn't but it, you folks? Know, we on, weren't prepared for this show. On that note, props to Pueblo Vita for not canning for that reason. Because, I mean, we, we kind of talked about this on the podcast with them. Is it, it, I'm not dogging any of our local breweries, but I think Pueblo Vita is probably one of the only breweries that I have not had a can with oxidation in. And I'm not saying everyone has oxidation, but there's not a brewery around here that I've had where I didn't have a beer that had definitely had some oxidation in it. I would say PB has some of their some of their IPAs just age in a really classy way. Like they don't turn to shit in a can in a month, in my opinion. I think some of them taste really good after a couple months. Um, well, you got that info, don't you, Ed? I did. I looked it up. Did go? Yeah, great. We're getting my reading skills again. No, I'll just paraphrase. So they did have <laughs> quote it word for word. <laughs> made <them> this shit. <laughs> quote and fingers. I quote. Um, so basically, it was a few things that led to delay in canning. Um, production obviously is oh one of them. God. Scheduling, can scheduling. They are having issues with uh, whoever does their canning. Because the lead times for canning is everybody's canning now, so right. that's right. It's scheduling canning time. Um, they did say the beer sat in the tanks a little longer than they wanted it to, but because really, of that, right? Yeah, because yeah. of that, and it's mostly just mm. hey, we. I mean, these places, a lot of these places can't afford their own canning line, so they're at the mercy of a third party. So right, they do the best they can, but at least they're putting the information out. Like they're not. Oh like, yeah, they're straightforward. They're awesome people. Kyle's a good dude. I wouldn't expect anything less than from that from that guy. Okay, do you guys want to start a quality control? Uh, a crowdsource and we'll do a Kickstarter and then we actually do a canning line, a mobile canning unit for ourselves and other people. I'm in. I'm in. 
I will. Because at this point, I think we can print money if we do that. I'll put, so. my, I'll put my two week notice in. Perfect. Before Perfect. I, going. I can't give up my pension. Sorry. You so, guys are on your own. I need some more beer. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Let's but, get some beer. Are you going to drink some of the maximalism or are you going to drink some of that next uh, Lacumbra? Uh, well, give me some maximalism right there on top of the weights, my oh, friend. It's too, it's too far for me. Yep, get your little stubby arms out there. So I was gonna say, uh, we probably should talk about kind of the sad elephant in the room. Ooh, a sad elephant? Sort of, I guess. It's sad. That makes me sad. But well, tell me about it, buddy. Poor uh, elephant. Nimbus Brewing in Got Tucson. A, oh, the sad monkey in the room. Sad monkey. Oh, see, I can want the monkey. Damn it. Rewind this. The sad yeah. gorilla in the Cut room. Cut this, and we'll do it again. Damn, Guys, you want to talk about the sad oh, monkey God. in the room? Tucson's Harambe. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yeah, no. Nimbus is uh, officially closing. Officially closes doors at this point, right? It's already closed. Um, I think it stemmed. Like we talked about earlier from basically a divorce, right? The the it, 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 the the catalyst wasn't the divorce. The catalyst was, I think, they expanded. They tried expanding outside of Tucson um, to Phoenix, and that that didn't go as it's well nice as expected. You yourself. Thank you. <clears throat> And Sorry, then, Jeff. and then through, I, I guess, a divorce and failing health of the brewer slash owner, is kind of like a perfect storm. That sucks. No one wants to hear about anybody having health issues, but I'm not gonna miss Nimbus Brewing one bit. No, nope. um, it's I, it's just a drag when you know something local goes goes under. And and well, I'm with you, Nate. I've I've drank Nimbus. I've been to Nimbus yeah, several times. That's the thing. I've had Nimbus. I mean, it, it it wasn't like super remarkable. You know, oh, I gotta go back there. But I mean, it it was decent. And you know, they Nimbus was a craft brewery in Tucson before Tucson had craft brew. Oh yeah, they made they laid they laid the groundwork for places like PV to be what they are today. I think even if they may have stayed what they were. Sure. You know. Yeah, I don't think they evolved a lot yeah. from the original, like what their yeah, they, their original yeah, like design was. Nimbus's core is a very old Jeff's age group. <laughs> Just kidding, Jeff. I was gonna say you well, guys what are you guys like five years apart, maybe two years? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. No, uh, but I mean they they're from being around Nimbus and going there and people who drink it are a pretty Oh, you're trying, Core to say demographic. You're, you're trying to say they're old? Yes. I don't think they brought in any new customers. Like, I just think... To be fair, Jeff, you're not nearly as old as Nimbus's crowd. <laughs> no, um, that's true. But you know I, what I, I mean? Like, differ. there wasn't a lot of young people drinking Nimbus. No. no. That I... From my perspective. No. So it's like, they made good beer. They stuck with it. And everybody else kind of... They might have made good beer in 1999. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm sorry. Well, they weren't open in 1999. They opened in 2009. So. They might have made a good beer in 2009. <laughs> I was going to say... But that seems to be the bigger issue. Damn, it's only been since 2009? Yeah. I remember buying Nimbus bottles, but that was when I was first getting into beer. Didn't know what I was buying, trying to figure it out. Is it really 2009? Maybe, maybe, it, was it, earlier. Really? maybe it was earlier than that. Oh, you know what? I think the Beastro opened in 2009. Let's I was going to say that, that had to be the beats, restaurant because I yeah. know for a fact I had Nimbus Click. beer in a bottle way before 2009. You have the internet at your fingertips. Find it when they were established. But that seems to be like a reoccurring theme in the beer world as a whole like people are expanding too quick and trying to reach new markets some are some when i think that green no, flash yeah green flash oh, yeah. green flash is a great example of that but uh, but again i, I mean country, we, man. we know this is coming this this is standard business cycle and and it it kind of worries me and concerns me because you know we've we've had this huge explosion of new breweries here in the valley and you know that a decent chunk of those aren't going to be around in five to ten years. I'd be curious to know who's going to go. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, why don't why can't we have a thousand breweries like San Diego? Well, because San Diego's starting to cannibalize itself. Yeah, and you can see San like, Diego's going to implode. There, there's a big. I love brew San bubble. Diego because the fact that it is a brew bubble, and you know what, you can go to any of the best breweries, and they're not even that stacked unless there's some insane can release. Oh no, but like you hear about things now going on in San Diego where. Basically, breweries are opening you know, up bottle shops and stealing away from bottle shops mm. and stuff like that. Like, there's just no room in that market. Are they for, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. They're basically saying, oh, we're going to open up a bottle shop, sell our beer out of the bottle shop, and take that account away from you. So, and, but what can you do? There's so Not much, cool. there's so much real estate to fight over. I think there's such little real estate to fight over is the main problem. No, there's so much real estate to fight over, but it's so crowded that yeah. everybody's stepping on everybody's toes. And I mean, 
that's obviously the worst case scenario because there's so many compared to here. But it's like a lot of breweries are doing it right. Like they're, and that's becoming a big theme around is own your neighborhood. Like places like Rent House and BRI. But Phoenix, I think Phoenix, how do I say this tactfully? Phoenix, I think Phoenix needs to focus on being a little more like San Diego because San Diego has a lot of breweries and you can like pub crawl on foot without even using Uber. Like you could hit three or four awesome breweries on foot in San Diego, no problem. And out here, I mean, there's there's small concentrations, but you know, they have the our, our little triangle, which is what, like Wren, Helton, and uh, Helio Basin. You can't really walk from one to another, especially after you've had a a few. Yeah, there's very but few it, places. It, you it's can almost like people out here are too afraid of being too close to another brewery. But like, like, look at cider core and Oro. You guys have made a ritual out of hitting like both of those whenever you go. Oh yeah, we go. We start at cider core and we'll finish at Oro or vice versa, and then usually we'll go get ice cream, right, Chris? Yes, ice cream's good. I like the ice cream. I, you know, it's funny. Oh, and, and uh, we, we're talking about downtown Mesa. Did we leave yeah. out Worth's sandwiches? Oh, Worth. Well, that's where you go to Oro. I mean, yeah, you can order some Worth's there. And then, yeah, uh, what I was going to say is uh, that's what we try to tell. We talked talk to Ryan. If you heard that episode, we talked to Ryan and told him that's if they come down to the valley, they should come down downtown Mesa like that because get rid of some of those antique stores and get some more breweries down there. Yeah, exactly. That place, that downtown Mesa is so old. Right. right? There are so many things that I are would, just. I would love to do like a legitimate brewery crawl out here to where it's like you don't have to worry about uber you don't have to worry about getting like you know a a, a curated guided right. tour or you know do all the it's just put all these breweries within walking distance of each other and everyone's so worried about competition but i think the nature of craft beer i mean people love to go and like sample different things we, well, we well, see like, it all the time well like we're also talking about san diego and it does uh, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing and for the record nimbus brewing opened in december 23rd 1996 okay so perfect so go back to your original joke fucking like, <laughs> <laughs> And those beers were good in 1996. Yeah, 1999. That was true. That was still a good joke. It's true. There you go. But that's that's like that's Arizona's fault as a whole because this state grew outwards. It didn't grow internally. Right. So Chris, there's no there's no mass transit. There is, but it yeah. runs to well. There's mass transit. Uh, I just wanted Chris to know that I had to find. He was annoyed that he had a, he was having a hard time finding that. I did have to find that in the most backwards way as well Dude, too. Nimbus is even having it on their website. Yeah. I <laughs> so know. hey, Jeff, you don't want to ride those ugly ass yellow bicycles around uh, downtown Mesa. I would just like to say uh, throw a shout out to Wine and Craft Beverage News. Let me um, let me just do a little PSA info. for you, Ed, and for our listeners. I happen to know for a fact that you can get a DUI. On a bicycle in Arizona. <laughs> True story. Don't drink and ride a bike. So, period. You know, it's down in Mason. In Ed said, that's really, it's old, right? It's an old area. But what I like about that is that there's a lot of character and there's a lot of cool buildings and there's a lot of like um, stuff that you can't get from strip malls and stuff, right? You actually have all this history behind the, the downtown area, which I love. I like that a lot more than going to a place that's just like, I mean, you know, it's just a shopping center that somebody built in 2001 or something, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. Jazz it up down there. Absolutely. Uh, we need to uh, take a quick break because we have some more beer to pour, and so we will be right back. Yanny. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back, and we're already mid-taste test here. Uh, what are you guys drinking? Is it? It's called In the Money. In the Money, double dry hopped IPA with uh, Citra from La Cumbre. This is number two. This is the in second the in our single double, in single hop, single, double IPA series. <laughs> single, <laughs> double, single hop, double, single hop, yeah. double malty, single alcohol, dual, double ABV. Double barrel, triple, triple I tasty. I, just, I think I just blacked out for a second. Wow. Sorry, I'm gonna say it. Yeah, that has a weird. I, I just had a stroke. The smell is odd. That's I don't. I don't. I don't get celery on the nose or on the palate at all. Oh, the palate, no. The Palate's completely different. Palate's like I get. Citra. I get. You get I get citra. like a citrusy dank on the nose. I guess in the taste, I get vanilla in there. I get aloe vera 
Ooh, oh, that's what I get in the nose. Fancy oh, okay. Pants. I get some vanilla in there. <laughs> Crazy. We're fancy now. Yeah. Aloe vera. It's rubbing my, my wounds. <laughs> he's, he's, so, my wounds. he's so itchy. I love how we're drinking these like Kumbras and Nate's over here sneaking Pueblo Vitas. I'm not sneaking. This is a very important taste he's, show. He's sharing. Exactly. Jeff gets it. Anyway. Oh. So news wise, the other thing that we want to talk about was uh, there was kind of an a open letter that the that bitch at Coors, the chairman of Coors, uh, Mr. Pete Coors. I didn't know. I didn't know there was a Coors family still. It's like the Bush family. Yeah. The the, the Bush I, Anheuser I, I family. Get a, I get yes. a I get a silver bullet for that guy. <laughs> wow. Is he a vampire? Wow. That's a werewolf, Nate. Oh no! Vampires die by silver bullets. This isn't that kind of podca- podcast, but I can argue about this with you all. Day. No, but I bet you I could bludgeon him to death with a full Coors Light can. I wonder if I could get a wheelchair and do it. Silver? Maybe there's a small amount of silver in it. Anyway, tell us about uh, Pete Coors, dude. <laughs> We've determined he's a vampire who can't be killed with a silver bullet, but perfect. I was handing another beer. I'm guessing this is number four. Oh yeah, what do we got here? We'll go ahead and tell us that. Oh, you know I have the can. He has My the bad. can. Nate, you tell us what it is. Uh, this is all in double dry hopped India pale ale from La Cumbra. Uh, the super secret fourth in our single double series from triple hop double IPA. They got a lot of single double triple. What's uh, the math on that, Nate? Seven? Uh, 25. What, uh, what, do you, what do you want it to be? Centennial. Okay. I'm just going to put this over. I got, two, I got two hands. I can't scroll. It actually smells really good. I can't scroll. That, I believe, is the freshest of the three. It's the freshy. Definitely. Dropping uh, dropping freshies. Popping freshies. And I'm drinking um Convergence from P V. Uh that's another IPA with Citra Hops, uh Chinook, Cascade, Hop Hash. Sweet. That's why I haven't had one try that. It's like me. No, 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 I'm, I'm gonna you can't have it. Yeah. Well you have one in your fridge, I'll Here you steal go. it. Did you say hop hash? Hop yep. hash. I'm gonna drink out of the can. Look up. I'm, I'm, that piqued my interest. Yeah, I'm I'm compelled to know what hop hash is. Something tells me it's a uh, super like you know just. Oh, is, super, this, is this one that's supposed to be like super dank? It's it's I don't know. it's the dank the, shaking. No, no, it's no, the no, dank no. shake from that's parallels. You were supposed to help me get a can of that. I got a can of it. Did you did you just get one? Yep. Ed Gomez okay, well, called right. out. Yeah. If you only got one, I don't I don't blame you one bit. No, I, I think this is the this is in the collab with them with the hop hash. I swear it was going with uh That's got hop hash in it though. No, I, that this does. I know you can read. I don't Nate, mean it like that. Nate, but you need it you need to Google hop hash immediately. I mean, this smells super fucking dank. I will Google. Well, it's, it's got hop hash in it, Chris. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, touche. Spectacle so course. P course, yeah. What did Big Beer now say? Now say, say now, now say. to put their foot in their mouth. Well, so evidently, uh, Pete Coors uh, attended the Brewers Association's uh, event, which is what the CBC Craft Brewers Conference. Yes, yes. and so uh, he's upset. Yeah, he he. They said went there. They said mean things. They about left us. him out, didn't they? Yeah. Well, so he went there, and there were. He's just mad because the Brewers say. I don't think it's necessarily that they left him out. It was the Brewers Association was doing what the Brewers Association does, and kind of like what we do. And of course, they were dogging big beer. Yeah, big beer's bad kind of yeah. thing. And so he kind of felt the ire of that. And then he had a so he basically wrote an open letter, kind of expressing his, uh, you know, frustrations with it and how you know it's funny because it's it's same it's some of the same mantras when we heard the the. Uh, Whatever from the high end fucking stuff, where it was yeah, like we go. need to rally against these because there's there's other people. We need to stop worrying about fighting each other and fight spirits and wine, guys. <laughs> yeah, I know. So there's like some of that in there. Uh, you know the multinational beer stuff. You know we they they're the, so congratulations on the attendance this year. He started off really nice, like, congratulations on the attendance and all this other stuff. But by the way, stop being so mean to us. Right. Yeah. Don't stop. Stop being mean. Um, as a paying member of the Brewers Association, I enjoy my subscription to the New Brewer, uh, and basically, I know there's an article in there that where they, uh, you know, basically shit all over. Yeah, beers, the beer industry is not exclusively made up of large multinational brewers or big brewery or fake craft beers. But it's funny they keep buying up these craft breweries so they can be fake craft beer technically. So, so what Pete's upset about is he's a member of the BA and he's upset that his beer, his brewery isn't considered a a craft brewery. 
it's, you it's know, I mean, I understand it's much smaller. I mean, it's not smaller or larger than that, but it's just, it's different than that. But I mean, he has to understand that he has, he owns a multi million, billion, whatever brewery. Why do we care about what his problems are? Yeah, I, I, it's really. He doesn't make beer for the for the styles. He doesn't make new beer. He doesn't try and he doesn't reach to new bounds. He just makes Coors Light. He probably doesn't make Coors Light. I don't. Who knows what Pete's involvement is with that company? That's uh, like I like how the the articles you read is talks about you. You know, like he's a brewer. Exactly. I guarantee you that oh, dude hasn't that. brewed a fucking beer in probably a decade. You know, exactly. um, who knows and, well, what his or, or at the is. very least he hasn't brewed one the hard way that's true the hard way stuff <laughs> with rice uh, so at the, at the bottom of it says you undermine your credibility by pitting us against one another to the ultimate determinant of the or detriment of the entire beer industry keep your independent seal your pride and your zeal for brewing but let's be united as an industry there, there are other enemies we all must fight together same thing. It's so, the arma- uh, <laughs> it's the armada of wine and spirits. You know, I get it. Pete Coors probably likes craft beer, and he probably wants to. Be, he probably wants to be. He's probably proud of Coors Light. Right. It's got his name on it. For Christ's sakes, I'm True. sure he's proud of it. <clears throat> That's great. I'm gr- I'm happy for Pete Coors. Then he should do something small. Then he should legitimately open a different brewery, and make something very small. You know right. what? I would I would almost willingly support big beer if big beer made craft that was worth a shit but everything that big beer does every brand that they have bought out they have fucking diminished the quality of it noticeably right well you know you know and that's i can't I, you know i i can't disagree with you um but I, the beers they bought i home. would say a lot of the breweries they buy i don't really give a shit about you know they brought. They bought Four Peaks. <clears throat> Fuck I mean, Four Peaks. I you know, mean, if, if he was serious about any fine. of this, he would invest in a small brewery in Golden, Colorado. That's what I'm saying. On a street corner. That's what I'm saying. He, if call he was it really some upset. Derivative of Coors. Fuck that, dude. And hell, call it Pete Coors. And it's that's what I'm a saying. Small right there. local brewery. But no, they. Not, that's not what they're trying to. He's accomplish. just upset that Coors Light isn't in the talks of all that. He's just upset. That he, that he's upset. Coors Light is a butt of. The joke now, exactly the silver bullet can. Seriously, if he was really want, if he really wanted to be, t- you know, just try it again. Do something when special. when you are trying to further your brand, when you're taking an age old brand and trying to market it to different people who already aren't buying your beer in droves, and the best thing you can come up with is can art that changes colors when you put it in the fridge. Fuck you. Hey, you're certainly not doing anything to make a beer any better. I mean, I liked it when Daryl did that with. Hey, the, they package it cold besides though. the battery. So you knew it was dead or not. Battery tester. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah. That was the greatest thing ever. Uh, they could, they, so I was gonna say, let's make the mountains turn blue. That's fucking great. <laughs> so there's actually uh, was it Nikos Ridge from Nikotsky Brewing actually had a basically a rebuttal, kind of like he basically breaks it down on on their blog, basically you know each section, and then basically has a rebuttal to each thing he says. Um, it's actually kind of interesting to read too. So you kind of read what Pete Kor said, and then you actually uh, read what uh, Nico says. So I think one of the, the one where he talks about uh, the, the craft beer magazine that he's a paid subscriber to or whatever, and they basically says, yeah, it's in fact a craft beer industry magazine. So sorry that we have a point of view that differs from a giant craft, craft giant you know beer industry like you guys. Yeah, are. absolutely. Sorry, weird. it's different. Yeah, weird. Um, Which I guarantee the Coors company newsletter probably has more funding than that craft magazine right and it basically says uh <laughs> what is it uh all i can say what exactly should craft brewers do um, do about it it seems you're suggesting we start advocating position more supportive of companies like yours companies that have all the power confuse customers hide the you know hide where the money comes from and then actually uh all the goodwill and hard work that that they craft brewers actually do in these smaller craft breweries so it's pretty pretty crazy, and yeah, then and it's just silly for anyone to expect us to think that, in uh, you know, for anybody to put cores in that conversation, right? Well, yeah, especially like if you go to a, any like local sports bar, or any national chain sports bar, if you see a Coors tap handle, guarantee all the little breweries next to that tap handle all belong to Coors. Yeah, like they're not right fighting for they're not fighting for Pueblo Vida and Rent House and yeah all the 
the local or anybody like that. They're we saw, you know, anyway, you know, that's a great point. You know, at least it brings me to a point that I think is great. That you know, all these big breweries, all these big people, they're buying up the little guys. And I think to myself, you know, if there's any positive to that, at least I'll get like some good beer on tap at like the local sports right. arena. No, still not even seeing any of that. Nope. I got Lagunitas on tap at the Coyotes games. You so, know? so the next the next point he made was being, uh, you know, the brewing industry is not made up of exclusively large, you know, multinational brewers or big breweries or fake craft brewers. It's made up of, uh, you know, craft brewers and home brewers and big brewers and blah blah blah. And you know, the it's all these things, and they're passionate about competing for the millions of American consumers who love beer. And the rebuttal is, uh, you're correct. The problem arises when certain tiers within this the industry, large multinational brewers such as yourself. Uh, mm-hmm. Work to obscure the origins and manipulate the market to their advantage by disguising beer brands as craft, air quotes, and using market power and tactics available to huge organizations. You deliberately mislead consumers or customers and damage mm-hmm. the industry. Yeah, it's like sounds Ooh, like damn. this guy knows what he's talking about. Yeah, so we link that on our. We'll have to link that. We'll on link this more stuff on there, and Facebook. the rest of the stuff he Facebook. each common point is really great. <laughs> and so the you must know it's insulting to those who don't meet the cl- the clever criteria of your self-proclaimed definition of craft brewer. And he says, no, what's insulting is for you to lie to your craft beer customers about the origins of their beer and argue that it's a problem we we craft brewers point it out. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Nice. Right? That's the thing is that it wouldn't be that big of a problem if everybody stopped pointing it out. Right. And, and oh, that, that's the whole yeah. thing is, I mean, everyone makes it out like there's this big, you know, beer war happening. And the only war that's happening in beer is big big beer big beer is afraid of losing market share to craft beer craft beer is killing it right now and but but still from in the grand scheme no one that we know and we know a lot of people we know a lot of successful breweries and brewers here in the valley in in san diego in the news no one in craft is getting rich off of craft beer uh, and you have these. Oh yeah, man! You can. That's a fact. But then you have you have AB InBev, except and, maybe and modern and times. That's true, but so but that guy's rich. Now. But but they're <laughs> but they're not making billions of dollars no, like Big no. Beer. So you have like Const- Walt Constellation. You have AB InBev. You have you know Miller Coors. These people are making money in the billions. Yeah. And, and I, I get it. No Treehouse one. No is doing one. Well. No one wants to see their bottom line it. reduced. But if if your income is in the billions of dollars and you lose market share to the tune of several hundred thousand or even a million, ah, uh, fuck you. <laughs> Stop fucking bitching. I just made the fun face fact. Here's uh, a fun fact face. Here's a fun fact from something I read earlier today. It's basically talking about the discrepancies. and It's a big, long read. I can let you guys post it. Or I'll link it, whatever. Um Basically, uh, production managers at Anheuser Busch are listed salaries between sixty five thousand and one hundred five thousand a year. Now, what are these salaries? Production manager. Huh. Tell Peasant. me what brewer peasants is making <laughs> hey, sixty five thousand here, dude. Honestly, I, I I don't know, but I guarantee some brewers are making fifty, sixty grand, and you know a lot of brewers are making that much money. A lot of you know a lot of head brewers are making that kind of money. Yeah, if you're I the wouldn't dare. I, I would. I don't. Brewer. I would hate to be skeptical, or I'd hate to just guess about what people are making in Arizona. But I mean, regardless of what people are making at Coors, those people just need to be proud of the fact they have a job. If they enjoy what they're doing, that's great. If they enjoy making Coors Light, that's fucking awesome. I would that's be. Right. No, that's nothing against them. That's I, just. Oh, I don't they have the money to. I would be amazed if anyone, anyone no, in the valley, any craft brewer that we know, is making six figures. It's probably true. So, side note, uh, I just longingly looked into the sky <clears throat> trying to think. Sorry. You know, people, yeah. So, uh, May fourth or fourteenth through the twentieth of uh, right now, which we're in right now, is American Craft Beer Week. FYI. Oh really? Yeah, we totally forgot to uh, bring that up. No, that's uh, why we're doing the show. Obviously, of course, <laughs> that will uh, have dur- that will have been about four weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're welcome. During this week, uh, the the Brewers, well, the Craft Beer, whoever people, craftbeer.com, who I think I believe is the Brewers Association, put out uh, a American Craft Beer Week bingo card. So there's some really cool things on here you can do. Oh, that's cool. Did you like, get bingo? Uh, not yet. I, I took a newbie to a brewery. So Ed, thanks for marking that off for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we took Ed places. <laughs> You've never taken me anywhere. I'll take you on a date. You've never taken me anywhere nice. Wow. <laughs> we'll nice. talk about this later, Ed. <laughs> you, don't, you don't know where I've been. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You don't know me. You didn't take me to California. You don't want to take me to rallies. We do need to plan a trip together soon, guys. We need to figure something out for when it's hot to go someplace where it's colder. And obviously, I think that's rally. And but trust me when I say you should thank us for not taking you to California because oh, my, I do thank my, you. my Tahoe was literally nuts to butts. Oh, I'm oh, it's fully smelled, agree. It's I'm very too. thankful that, for not doing that That was trip. ridiculous. Don't get me wrong. I wish I could have been there for like parts of it right like you went to monkish you went to a few other good spots you went to you went to el cerrito that bottle, t- logic. That bottle shop bottle logic <laughs> we got, good, we got good treated service. like royalty at bottle logic. who doesn't want to you know, thankfully i have been part of that when we've been treated quite well before so i know what it's like and i don't it's have true. to be like what was that like <laughs> oh god but you know it's uh it, yeah i'm it's not a- upset about missing it i just you know i really need to get to el cerrito uh and nate now has a hobby crafts mobile so i do it's perfect Yep, I do. I got myself a new car, so we'll be doing that. We can fit three people in there. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Sorry, can put, yeah. We can fit four fat adults in it. Yeah. And there's, I'm there looking at least three portly-ish ones. Rowley road trip. Stout. Yep. Stout, yeah. Yeah, you guys are strong. I'm portly. <laughs> strong. <laughs> strong. I'm, I'm strong. Okay. So yeah, anyway. Rowley just put up that new uh, gazebo type. Hey. Patio. Here, but here's the deal. Raleigh's here now, so why we need to go to Santa Fe? Yeah, yeah, that's true. It, <laughs> it's called a collab, Dick. Damn it! <laughs> Drink we it do the need source. to work on a good collab. Some vault, need some vault beers. We got. I'm excited for the twelve we, we got, collab. We got the brewer and the owner wanting to do a collab. Fine. Shit's, shit's gonna go down. Love those guys. We should, let's do something really awful that they normally don't do. Like a sour stout. Do or, we need. Oh, let's do a sour. <laughs> let's let's do a sour stout and just call come it like on. call it like funk you. No, John wouldn't do it's that called to the, me. We, no, let's do a, a smoked something, and we'll call the Smoking Man. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else for us, Ed? Before we wrap up here for the night. No. Not oh, perfect. Well, I appreciate you coming. I don't know if I'm happy to be here. Why? Well, I, enjoy, <laughs> I enjoyed having you regardless. Come you're on. very upset with me today. Come no. on. You're, you're happy to be That's here. Nate. That's Nate every day. Don't yeah. worry. It's not, it's not different. If I'm, I'm not day. upset with you, I don't like you. you. Made fun of my beer fridge. I didn't make fun of it. I just think to myself, man, that man's got himself a big-ass beer fridge. He must have a hard time keeping that thing fresh. Well, you guys don't come over and drink my beer, so. I don't get many invites. That sounded like an invitation. Yep. Pool's How's ready the pool? to go. I was going to say, how the pool's looking good, ain't it? Pool's bright, as as bright bring... blue and... As long as I can bring my whole family. Uh, I don't have any floaties, so you'll have to borrow Chris's. No, trust me, no my, need, my family gonna, needs them. We're not going to need those. So, yeah. <laughs> I got I got Iron Man and Avengers floaties. Bitches. Sweet. I have uh, arm floaties. Is that okay? I have to use them still. <laughs> anyway. Perfect. I got diving so, yeah. boards. So. Yeah, also, up. don't go in his pool if you've had diarrhea in the last two <laughs> weeks. In the last two weeks. Yeah. That's no, going to put me out of any pool ever, dude. Come no on. No hop shits allowed. <laughs> Come on. Who? Perfect. Whatever. Never mind. We don't need it. It was not good. Yeah, so, Ed, Ed, where can people follow your non blog that you don't have anything yeah, written your for a blog while? you don't currently do? <laughs> uh, follow me on Instagram at Barley Legible. I'll bring the blog back soon. I wasn't taking a break or anything. It's so, true. I mean, you well, didn't have my, a party, so my I didn't computer tell. broke. Yeah, my computer broke. What is this? Nineteen ninety nine. Hey, man, get a new one. I did. <laughs> I like two hundred bucks. It's called the library. Anyways, Nate, where can people find us on social media? Please hit us up on at Hoppy Craftsman on Instagram and Facebook, and hit us up on the internet at hoppycraftsman.beer. dot beer. Boom, Jeff. Who are the raddest fucking people in the world? We're also on Twitter. Raddest fucking people in the world. Ed's lovely wife, Cena Gomez. Fuck you, Ed. We know all the money comes from her. Oh, we love her way more than we like her. Uh, we, for, I actually had that uh, conversation fact. before I came here. For, San Diego uh, Beer fact. Talk Radio, Mark Balsteros, Javier Gonzalez, and no Phil sass. Mitchell Wall. These are our Patreon supporters. We appreciate every Phil penny Wall. you guys give us. Believe it or not, it costs kind of a bunch of money to do a podcast. Weird. And so, At least yeah, I it mean, it costs a lot to make us so we're, you know, to, keep us all well fed exactly and sound good and, and yeah, sound good yeah our, sound our good. keep our hey. livers working thank yeah, you thanks for sending my wife a merchandise link too asshole you're welcome and i was getting to that chris She's good woman we have merch we do so uh we opened up a threadless store so you can go to hoppycraftsman.threadless.com and uh we actually have a bunch of different designs up there for people to peruse and look at uh we have men's and women's 
different uh, styles of garments, I guess is the way to say it, right? Yeah, um, if you're in 1860. It's true. Uh, little House on the Prairie is fine. Uh, and then we actually have accessories as well. It says Ed's beautiful wife bought a water bottle. So Jesus That's Christ. Nice. Yeah, so by the time this comes out, just <laughs> Dang, go to... I can't uh, wait to see that. That's And she confided cool. in me that she's about to spend a metric fuck ton on pants. Perfect. Beer drinking sweats. Hoppy Craftsman <laughs> pants. <laughs> Yeah. She's good per she's good people. So by the time this comes out, uh check out Saucy Cena on Instagram because you'll probably see all the Hoppy Craftsman uh gear on yeah, there. Swag. We love it. Boom. Perfect. Uh and the, the actually the link will be up on our website as well. So if you go there, you can find the link to uh, the shop. So perfect. All right, guys. Well, as uh, as always, I'm Chris. I'm Nate. I'm Jeff. I'm going home. Thanks, and, uh, Ed. Thanks, Ed. We love you, bro. Drink local, guys. We'll see you.